See, God want to take you into the, the system of power in another, in another world. Because see, God's economic system is dangerous, is prosperous, is on top. See, you can live so long on this earth that you start letting the earth become the dictator of truth. I had left this earth a long time ago because this earth had owed me a lot of money. Growing up, and some of you all understand this, when like you real sick, or my biological, you know, whatever it was, <laughs> didn't pay child support. My, my, I had single, mother was single. So the, the world's government had owed me a lot, but I had got to a place where I said, these niggas got too much laws and regulation. I ain't got time for this. So I, I used the seed as my retaliation. Can I talk to you in here? They was moving too slow for me. <laughs> the, and and it, it was disrespectful to me because I understand I had a great destiny. They want you to go through all type of stuff to get their money. Niggas. And I found out that if I honored the Lord with my finances, that I could determine how big I was going to live on earth. Not no job, because saints, I had worked at jobs before, like towards my latter years. And when I was at the job, I would use my seed from the paycheck I was getting, and I would use that to manipulate my productivity at the job. Because at one point I became the top seller there and I, I was I, I was at the lowest because I didn't know what I was doing. Saints, me and the natural system don't go good together. I promise you, I don't understand Caesar system. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? I wasn't made for the earth at all because this system that's set up is really not God's system. No way. It's here because man, most men are sinners. And so most men are going to push the establishment of another system. But saints, I don't understand that natural world system no way. And I never did. When I was in school, there was certain stuff. I remember one time I was taking a test. I said, Lord, what does this mean? He said, I don't know. I scratched my head. I said, wait, Jesus, I'm going to get an F. <laughs> she, I... She, Lord, I'm about to get an F. Like, what? Uh, and here's what the Lord told me. He said, I didn't make this. This is not my curriculum. I found that out very early. I used to be frustrated with going to school. I used to be like, why am I here? I don't want to hear about no Christopher Columbus. I was like, there's a little boy. When the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, I don't know what that means. Because that's not my curriculum. That's not my stuff. It shocked me. But at the same time, I said, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. This is a path that was sculptured because of just conforming to the world. But saints, do you know, do you know why really you have to conform to the world? Because you ain't got no money. Because you actually could pay for certain things. And if you had the money, you could pay for your child to be submitted to certain things according to the way that you wanted it to be. Like see Zendaya, I'm not going to have nobody indoctrinate her with all that stuff that's vanity. I'm going to filter every, every chain. Like a hawk. Because I created her. That's my creation. And then I named her. That's a double. It, it, see, if I create saying I don't name it. Uh, 
Uh, but if I create something, I name it, I'm going to see that come to pass. I done, every seed that I've named it done came to pass. Do you know that, right? Every seed that I've sold for has come to pass. That's why you see me teach the seed like I teach the seed. Because I'm not no hypocrite. As I stand before God Almighty, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a liar. Every seed that I have named have come to pass. There's seeds that I've named for people that has come to pass. Sometimes I sow, I sow for people that I care about. I sow because I sense in the spirit that they're becoming a jackass. So I, I, I sow for them. I sow, Lord, don't let the jackass rise. Please, Father. I named this seed no jackass. And the jackass die off. I, it's real. I use the seed for everything. I was praying for my partners last night. I was praying for y'all, literally. I don't, I don't mean that strategically or like figuratively. But I've sown no jackass seeds before. <laughs> and the Father has granted me a harvest. Because... I literally intercede for you. You know, I was praying for some of y'all last night. I'm shocked that some of y'all don't pray for me. I'm shocked. Saints, we've been taught that you pray for people because they need prayer. That's the same thing that we did with money. We say that. I don't need no money or, or they need money or give them money because they need money. No, God don't work like that. God don't do stuff because there's a need. Somebody precious to me in my ministry, they said, they told me that they're praying for somebody else. I said, do you pray for me? Because I'm the one laboring for you. I hear you, but they're not laboring for you. I hear you. I hear you, but they're not teaching you like I teach you. They're not here all the time laboring for you. I hear you. But how the hell are you going to pass over the one that's laboring for you And pray for another leader before your own. That's like you going to your parents. I'm about to go pray for another parent. Your parents like, well, I done fed you. I done gave you a bath. I done. But I'm about to go pray for another parent, though. God told me to go pray for another parent. It's amazing how we hear God impressing on us to do everything except what we could do to actually please him. Do you know that I have the power to do whatever I want? But what is wanted? What's wanted? Hallelujah. What does God want? What is the pleasure of God? And saints, the great God Jehovah money is in his pleasures. When you become a thankful money, uh, a thankful person, you start qualifying for the great God Jehovah's money. When you start becoming thankful. Because saints, thankfulness carries a spirit, it carries a behavior. You know what happens? When you are thankful, your mind starts comprehending. Okay, I need to do this. I need to say this. I need to get away from this. Because if I keep on doing this, it's exemplifying unthankfulness. Watch that. Think about what I just said there. Listen, cover me in the blood. Cover me. Cover me. <laughs> it's 
Make sure it's the blood of Jesus, man. Shoot. I'm about to say the same. Nah, I, 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 feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel jokey right now. <laughs> cover me, cover me some pineapple, some oil, some, some, some all that stuff, man. Cover me, cover me. <laughs> Wait, I can't make that sound. I gotta pick another one. I make another sound. <laughs> them, them claps wasn't appropriate for what I was. Claps wasn't appropriate at all. It wasn't appropriate. <laughs> Saints, I, I, I had questions. I wanted to ask the Dugan family, how did that white woman pop them... How did she pop them things out so quick? Black people be crying when they have a baby. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! Be up there screaming. Like, come, come on, come on. Hey, get off my hand, man. Call stop. Chill. <laughs> White people be popping out their baby like boom. Like boom shakalaka. The, the baby just boom. This is... Oh, the baby just come out. Like, how did you have 19 babies, dog? Or the Lord. They said, uh, pop them out. You know, by the time she got to the 14th, the 10th child, she was just chilling like this here. Baby just coming out there chilling. All the time, they was doing her nails. She had filet mignon sister. The lady tried to get a tip from her. She said, hold, hold on. I need tip still. I know you're having baby, but I need to have... I, I know I know that you have in triplets, but I still need a triplet tip. I need tip on mine. <laughs> she up there got silver tips on while the baby was coming out just The other time she was reading the newspaper. They up there come on, come on, push, push, push. She up there reading the newspaper. Found out that they hit Bill Cosby in the head with a cold sandwich. <laughs> they hit the Bill Cosby with a cold sandwich. Somebody had some Subway eat fresh in the jail. How did that happen? Since I was shocked to find out that the jail had cigarettes. <laughs> Brother inside the jail. Like, you, you in the orange suit. How did you get a cigarette? My goodness, this man smoking a black amount inside the jail. I can't believe it. How did this happen? How did this happen? How did he get some swishers inside of the swisher? The great God Jehovah, money, will invade your life on earth for you to see how much of a good experience God is. The great God Jehovah, money, is an encounter with divine presence. The royalty realm of God is a display of his riches. The royalty realm of God is a display of his riches. You have to overcome sowing witches to get to riches. You have to overcome sowing riches, witches to get to riches. Because even when you're not excited about the seed, it's a realm of the sowing witches. When you become lukewarm about the seed, when you start forgetting the activity of the seed, what it is working in your favor, the effectiveness of the seed, now those are sowing witches. Spirits that make you look warm and sowing are very dangerous to you fulfilling God's plan for your life on earth. Lukewarmness about sowing and reaping creates deception in your reception of what the blood paid for. Lukewarmness about sowing and reap, reaping 
it creates deception in your reception of what the blood paid for. Lukewarmness in sowing and reaping. Laziness. Pitch your, slow, your sewing mantle to sleep. Your sewing mantle goes to sleep through laziness. Diligence is the reactivation of what it means to honor God again. If you're taking us, write it down. Diligence is the reactivation of what it means to honor God again. Diligence gives you a divine definition of bowing before the Lord Jesus. Diligence gives you a divine definition of bowing before the Lord Jesus. Saints, people have always acquainted getting on your knees just to pray. They never acquainted it to getting on your knees to sow. People have always told you you get on your knees to pray. People have never told about getting on your knees to sow. But the Bible said that they got on their knees. They laid down their money at the apostles' feet. But see, it has only been pushed as a doctrine to get on your knees just to pray. Rather than get on your knees to sow. The Bible said every knee shall bow. That knee is a place of worship. It's a place of celebration. <laughs> it's, a, it's a place of pleasure. <laughs> I can't say that without laughing, man. Excuse me, that just I shouldn't have had no. Never mind. Somebody get me some milk. No, no, not me. Maybe I give somebody some milk. Let me. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. That, that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. When we, that's what happened. When we, that's what happened. That's what happened. Let me keep on moving. Let me keep on moving. I don't have to edit that whole thing out because there about five people. Going to say, I told. I heard you, prophet, on the line telling some that you need some milk, prophet. Nigga, you don't get your ugly stuff back. If you want, you want me to choke you? You want me to strangle you? Huh? You want me to strangle you? Huh? You want me to choke you? Huh? Yeah, that's exactly what I want you to do. Oh my goodness, this is a dream come true this Christmas in January. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> See, you gotta be careful. You got to be careful when, if you try to argue with somebody. You be like, you want me to choke you? That's what I've been wanting you to do anyway. Oh, you don't even choke me. Well, blessed be God. <laughs> Please do not name your seed choke me seed. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please don't name your next seed. Choke me seed. Please, please, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm chapter 17 here. Verse 18 or uh, 15. It said, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake. With thy likeness. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. And I will behold thy face in righteousness and I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Watch this, people of God. You notice what it says here. It says, I will behold thy face in righteousness. The face represent image. This the image of God. 
As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. <laughs> and I shall be satisfied when I... <laughs> Say that's how you. That's how. That, never mind. Um, Psalm seventeen. <laughs> Psalm seventeen, verse fifteen. <laughs> I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will behold thy face in righteousness. What this is an impartation of the image of God functioning through you. Remember what Adam was doing as the image of God. He was a massive, mighty sower. I will behold thy face in righteousness. Meaning that when you make this image known to me, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to say yes to it. When you make this image of how you are and what you love, when you make it Real to me, I'm going to say yes to it. Oh my goodness. Saints, imagine. He's saying, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I'm not going to reject the image of how you created me to function. Saints, I can't get this out of my mind. We talked about the anointing of Solomon. Do you know that Solomon wasn't sleeping with all those women, right? They would have wore Solomon out. Some of them were some Cheetos. They'd... Let, let, me t let me say something. <laughs> I ain't going to call no names, but I got to find a way to portion this up so it can't be. But one time, there was a preacher. He asked me, he said, Prophet, give me a wife. This is what he said to me. I, I, a couple left, so you can't find out what I mean. And I wanted to tell him, let me, let me tell you something. <laughs> you praying for a young woman. Number one. <laughs> young. I, this is what I told him. I told I had to be out. I said, listen, sir. I hear what you're saying, but young woman be up there going extra long and, and they... The rapture done came and they still ain't, they still, they, they, let me tell you something. <laughs> they done went to heaven seven times. <laughs> and they, they still act like they ain't went to heaven once. I told them, you don't, you want you a seasoned veteran. She not going to lie to you. She going to be honest because when that leg give out, huh? Huh? <laughs> when that leg give out, she can't trick you. It's going to be obvious. She, once, 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 once that sore start kicking in, she can't hide it. When that screech in the back, she, she ain't going to lie to you. Get you seasoned veteran because she, them young girls, they, they say, brother, you don't want to pray that. Just take that off your prayer list because they're going to deceive you. <laughs> three, three hours later, <laughs> three hours later, they done called the ambulance. He, he now res <laughs> he now responsive in the back up there. They trying to pump his chest. <laughs> ah, they trying to pump his chest, but meanwhile, she in the back telling the man, stop pumping his chest like that. Because <laughs> she having flashbacks, so that's how she killed him. She was pumping his chest. <laughs> the doctor like, ma'am, could you move back? Didn't you call us to... <laughs> oh, oh, the, the 
doctor up there and say, ma'am, could you move back? Let us pump his chest like, no, no, please don't pump his chest. <laughs> she having flashbacks. She killed him. She lied to him. She had went to heaven nine times and then talking about she, she's still trying to make it through the great clouds. The, the clouds were stopping. He couldn't take it, man. But see, at least I was honest. I told her, I told her, I said, I said, uh, you, 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 you want to get seasoned. Don't, 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 don't. Because see, a lot of times people's mind go further than what they can handle. Same thing with finances. Having wealth will wear you out if you're a fool. Because do you have endurance for the wealth? Because if you ain't got endurance for the wealth, once you get it, your love for God going to die off. Because you two intermingled with the wealth. See, saints, I disrespect the money I got. And when money try to talk to me, I, I backslap money. See, when you sowing, you keep money in its place. You keep it trained. But when you let money start taking up your time, see, saints, it don't matter how much money I got. Ain't, money can't stop me from preaching this gospel. You see what I'm saying? Money just empowered me to preach the gospel. I'm able to do more. Look at Psalm 17. <laughs> Look at Psalm 17. Look at verse 7. It says, Show me thy loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. See, this the sower. This the sower's benefit. When you are sower, God going to show you his marvelous loving kindness. And anything that rises up against you, he's going to deliver you from it. Look at verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness and I shall be satisfied. See, the image of God is where all your satisfaction is. If you take a note, write it down. Because the image of God is a sowing image and it satisfies you in the realm of harvest. Saints, when you become a master sower, guess what? The seed actually starts satisfying you when you sow it. Because since I, I, I have started to experience these last couple of years of my life, supernatural pleasure in sowing certain seed accomplishments. Like, in, in the, in, and when you are sower, you'll start setting sowing goals. Like, I wanted to know what it felt like to sow 5000 or $20,000. I done did all that stuff. I wanted to know how did it feel to sow triple digits. So, so when you become a, a seasoned, a salty sower, my goodness. Wait, 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 wait. I just heard the spirit say, you got to clarify that. Becoming a salt sower is better than becoming a salty sower. Because a salt sower has a revelation that they're releasing preservation power. Remember, salt is a preservative. A salt sower know that they're preserving themselves from evil. But a salty sower is a sparingly sower. They don't know what they're doing. So they're trying to do it out of law, but there's no grace flowing. 
So they don't do it energetically. They don't do it bountifully. They don't do it with meaning. They don't do it with sacrifice. But see, a salt sower, they know that they add in flavor to the food that they give into God. The salt sower know that they raising God's blood pressure to high. Oh my goodness. Because now God got high blood pressure. The blood of Jesus is highly pitting pressure on satanic powers working in your life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. See, a salt sower give God high blood pressure. Because the blood start pitting pressure on the financial covenant that King Jesus died for you to receive. Life and life more abundantly. Riches, riches, riches. Riches in glory. See, the salt sower, they experience all of the glories of high blood pressure against the enemy. So when the devil want to fight your body, there's high blood pressure being placed upon the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of sickness. The blood pressure against demonic darkness is greater than the pressure that demonic darkness want to put on the blood, the covenant, what you have, who you are. The seed, the blood... And the sower must cry out together for a perfect petition unto God. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That statement just now that I just said, if, if you let that sit in your soul, it's over. If you let that statement I just said, if you let that sit in your soul, it's over. The seed, the blood, and the saw must cry out together for a perfect petition to God. When the Lord see the saw, the seed, and his blood crying out, all of your inheritance is in that perfect harmony. That threefold cord that's not easily broken. Because see, if the seed and the blood crying out for you to be rich, for you to be healthy, for you to have favor, for you to be blessed, but you, the sower, has become lukewarm, guess what? You stop in the flow. You can sow hot seed and not be a hot sower. Oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Because your seed is there, but you're not. The total man got to be involved in the worship. The, watch this here. The woman with the alabaster box could have listened to Judas. And she could have still sold that alabaster box and be thinking about what Judas said. But she blocked out all the disciples. Her total man was in that seed, so in activity. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. See, for us, that's real sowers, this real to us. See, JHM, you're a home of real sowers. So some of you all can catch this real heavy. Because you're a real sower. There has to be a total flow to your sowing. You can't just sow because you know that that's what God instructed you. When you sow because of instruction, you, you, you're going to become bored over time. See, saints, I'm not a sower because God instructed me. I'm a sower because this is my lifeline, my goodness. I don't breathe unless I sow. See, see you might see me breathing, but if I don't sow, I'm still dead. My life is in my seed. You might see me talking, but I ain't really talking until my seed speak up. Oh, my goodness. 
You might see me following God, but I ain't really following God until my seed start walking behind Jesus. You might see me praising, but I ain't praising God for real until my seed start offering up the voice of triumph. And my seed start shouting unto the Lord. I just heard the spirit say your seed can sing. Oh, my goodness. Your seed got lungs. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sowing is the windpipe of God. Sowing is the windpipe of you. Your seed is the umbilical cord for the father to keep on feeding you the supernatural. Oh my goodness. Your seed is the umbilical cord for the father to keep on imparting abundance to your table. Your seed is an umbilical cord. Mm. So, so whatever God is digesting, he digesting streets of gold. He digesting crystals and burnings and onyx. He, he digesting jasper. He, <laughs> he digesting in his father's house are many mansions. Once, once you start digesting from the umbilical cord, the hundredfold got to manifest. You got to have houses and lands because all God is doing is transferring his lifestyle to you through the umbilical cord. You got to be a virtuous woman because that's coming through the umbilical cord. You got to be a divine man. That's coming through the umbilical cord. You, you got to be free from sin. That's coming from the umbilical cord. Ah. You got to love the word of God. That's coming through the umbilical cord. Ah. You got to love praying in tongues. That's coming through the umbilical cord. You got to love praise and thanksgiving. All of that is in the umbilical cord. You got to love sanctification. You got to love being by yourself if wrong people are trying to connect with you. Because that's in the umbilical cord. What? That's in the umbilical cord. You got to start breaking off relationships that's out of season or it was never supposed to even have a season because that's in the umbilical cord. You got to start saying my father, my mother, my brother, my sister is the one that do the will of the father because that's in the umbilical cord. You got to say money coming to me now because that's in the umbilical cord. <laughs> 